Hey, what's up, y'all? How you guys doing? Hope you're having an absolutely amazing uh, Thursday evening and that you're uh, having a decent start to the new year, man. 2021 has already had a bit of a rocky start, but uh, we're not going to go into that too much tonight. Uh, we could. We, we definitely could. But, but, but tonight we have something special for you guys. Uh, for those of y'all that are new to pre-PP Grind, uh, my name is Joseph Googie. This is Casey Coleman. We are uh, both physical therapists. We are PT school acceptance coaches. And what we've been doing since 2014 is just helping students like yourself get into PT school without having to guess, waste time, waste money, uh, because the field of physical therapy is beautiful. It, it, you know, the, whatever the reason was for you joining PT or at least pursuing physical therapy, we want to help you get there because of that reason. And uh, once a week, we uh, come into this group exclusively uh, to, to talk about something that is relevant to you or uh, conversations on topics that we have kind of collected from students that we have coached. We're like, yo, this would be extremely valuable for the students that follow us to hear and process on their journey to becoming physical therapists. And so uh, we're, gonna do, we're gonna do that tonight. We call it the pre-PT grind chat live. Uh, so as you guys are here, for those of y'all that are here on Facebook watching this live, uh, feel free to comment hashtag team live. Feel free to comment hashtag team replay. Uh, feel free to tag your friends or even invite them to this group uh, so that they don't miss out on uh, these live sessions, these live trainings, uh, because they, they, <laughs> I'm telling you right now, like we deal with a lot of the things that are holding you back as a student because our goal is to get you into PT school. So if they need it, bring them in here, tag them in here, and we will serve them as well. So uh, Casey, before we start tonight, how are you feeling, brother? I'm feeling great. I'm feeling good. Can't complain. Can't Love complain. It. It, am I coming through? Yes, sir. Loud and clear. All right. Yeah, I can't complain. It was a good, smooth day at the clinic. Got uh, done early. It was a green day in the stock market. So life is good. <laughs> life is good. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. So for those of y'all that are here, for those of y'all live, comment hashtag team live. For those of y'all on replay, comment um, hashtag team replay. Tonight, we will talk about uh, what you have to get sick and tired of as a pre-PT if you want to get accepted into physical therapy school. Right now, 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 if you're watching this right now and you're like, man, I'm still waiting to hear back from schools or I'm applying this coming cycle or I've applied many times before and it hasn't gone my way or I'm scared of my low GPA holding me back, all the other fears that we can kind of go into, listen to this because there are certain things that if you guys want to get in and we've just like, we're not pulling this out of thin air. This is just from watching students that we have coached in our accepted system coaching program, students that we've spoken to, there's, a, there's some differences right? And those differences, unlike what you may have been told by your advisor and everyone else, those differences aren't necessarily GPA. Like there are students that have started with 2.4s and they're in PT school now, right? So, so it's not necessarily GRE because there's plenty of students that struggle with the GRE and they're in PT school now. It's not necessarily the amount of times they were rejected because there's people that have been rejected 20 plus times and they're in PT school now. But, but, but what we've noticed is there's certain characteristics that allow students that feel defeated to ultimately become amazing, amazing applicants. Does that make sense so far? And so tonight we're gonna to talk about one important one that I believe that everyone who's watching this or listening to this, like if, if you can do this, then you will be one step closer to being in control of your PT school acceptance journey and, and really like realizing this dream of becoming a physical therapist. And that is uh, certain things that you have to get sick and tired of, all right? So I'm gonna list a list of a few things and I'm like, yo, if, if students could just like get to the point because I believe that like for you to get into PT school, regardless of what your current obstacles are, it's possible, like believe that, but, but, but there's a certain amount of work ethic that has to come behind it, right? There's a certain amount of like grind that, ha I mean, it's called pre-PT grind for a reason, but that grind can't be forced. That grind comes from like being pissed off with certain things, being sick and tired of certain things, being ready to finally let go of certain things. And students that are, that are at that point, like they're unstoppable. <laughs> like we had one of our students, his name is Ben Kim, right? I remember interviewing him on, uh, on Facebook a few years back. 
he had started with a 2.4 GPA. And so how he described it, and I, I haven't forgotten it to this day, he actually said, and feel free to go on our YouTube page and uh, find his live stream or follow him on YouTube. The, 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 I think it's, I think it's the, the 2.4 pre-PT or something like that. Uh, but he said, Joseph, I have to start playing angry. That's the term he used. What he was saying is he was like, I had to basically like stop playing. Like I had to go all in, right? Being someone that had a 2.4 GPA, being someone that had been told by his family members, by um, other faculty members, his advisors that, yo, like your, your GPA is never going to, like you will never, it doesn't matter how hard you work, you will never get into PT school. And he got to a point where he was just like, no, like, like I can't accept that. He got sick and tired of what he was being told. He got sick and tired of feeling like a victim of his circumstances. So, so I'm gonna list a list of nine things that you have to start, like, like, like at some point, you're just gonna have to get fed up with them. Because when you're fed up with these nine things, and, and there's a much longer list, that's the point where you will start asking completely different questions. And the students that do that are empowered. And then at the end, we will actually give you guys um, an announcement about a training that we're doing soon where we're actually going to help you get into the driver's seat of your acceptance journey. And so here are some of the nine things that came off the top of my head. The, the first one is you have to, like, like, what will it take before you're truly sick and tired of your past defining you as a free PT? Like, what will it take? Like, if I, if, if I constantly keep saying, well, oh, but, but, but I can't change my first three years of college, Casey. Like, yeah, I had a 2.1 GP. I had a 2.7 GP afterwards. Like, I can't change that. Like, we live in the past so long that we don't actually do anything in the present. Anxiety can, like, completely controls us. Number two, being sick and tired of your GPA being your greatest source of fear and stress. If all we're doing is spending time freaking out and, and, and being anxious, like at, at some point we have to get sick and tired of being in that position. So the question is, what are we going to do about it? Number three, being sick and tired of anxiety controlling how you see yourself as a pre-PT. Anxiety is a massive liar to you. <laughs> anxiety like will like, like sneakily lead you to believe that you don't deserve this when you really do. Getting sick and tired of your age making you believe that it's too early or too late to become a PT. When are you gonna get sick and tired of your age telling you that you can't do this? We interviewed a student recently that had uh, finished our program, uh, the Accepted System Coaching Program. He's 37 years old and he's just about to start PT school. Too old, come on now. Getting sick and tired of your GRE frustrations leading you to believe that you don't have a shot. What are you gonna do about it? Like, when are you gonna get sick and tired of that being the thing that holds you back? Because when you're sick and tired of something, you start looking for different solutions. If I'm sick and tired of using the same study process, just going to Kaplan and Magoosh and just, just reading the book and it's not working out and Joseph, I've studied for six months and I just like, like I'm trying, man, I'm trying. Okay, at some point you gotta get sick and tired of being consumed by that and say, all right, let me take a step back. How do I, how have other people figured this out? How have other people who have been in this situation figured it out? Next one, getting sick and tired of negative friends or family leading you to doubt yourself. At some point, you have to get sick and tired of other people pouring negativity into you and making you believe that you don't, that, that this isn't your career, making you believe that maybe you should be doing something else. At some point, you gotta get sick and tired of it. How do you change that? Well, if I'm sick and tired of it, maybe one, I tell them all the good things instead of all the bad things. <laughs> Maybe number two, I don't talk to them about certain things that could maybe stir up some of those conversations. Maybe three, I find other people that are on the same path that I'm trying to be on. Other people that have accomplished what I'm trying to accomplish. At some point, y'all, we have to get sick and tired of the, the, the circumstances that we're in. Guessing, you have to get sick and tired of guessing your way into PT school. That that's number seven. You have to get sick and tired of number eight, letting your fear of rejection cripple you. And number nine, you have to get sick and tired of procrastination serving as your main escape. 
I'm telling you right now, y'all, anything, anything that you feel right now, and, and I mean, if you don't believe me, feel free to reach out to us and we'll talk about it. If you feel like you have a very unique circumstance and you're like, oh, no one's ever experienced this, hit us up. You might, I mean, maybe. I mean, like, there's, there's always something. But I can almost tell you that there, there has to come a certain point where you are so sick and tired of believing that that defines you, that you actually do something about it that you actually find a solution for it. Now, we have plenty of solutions for all those things. But what we've noticed is that there, there's a lot of students that are, are, are stuck in this cycle of complaining about their situation, but not doing anything about it. It's like, oh yeah, you know, my GO, yeah, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll think about it next fall. Oh, my GPA, oh yeah, I retook a class once, but I hate retaking classes. I hear that one a lot. I hate retaking classes, so I just, uh, can you tell me anything else? Like, y'all, you got to get sick and tired of your situation. So then, Joseph, what do I do? What do I do if I'm sick and tired of the things that I feel are holding me back? Well, okay, like now, now, now we're asking the right questions. Now we're asking the right questions. And, and uh, the most current solution I can give you to that is a training we're doing in this month on the 17th. It's our acceptance masterclass. If you haven't registered for it, don't register for it right now. Like we're going to help you learn how to get out of this rut because I'm telling you, like, as you guys can hear in that list, those are the things that ultimately lead us to doubt ourselves and quit. Like that's the only reason why you'll not get into PT school is if you pull the plug and quit. But don't feel like you're trapped. It, like that's your story. But, 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 but on the other side is like, how much more powerful will your story be when you're able to accept where you're at right now and like and work through all of it like how inspirational is it to you when you hear the story of someone that had a low gpa that got in someone that took the gre five times and struggled with it and got in someone who had tremendous amounts of anxiety and got in someone who was around a, a lot of negativity and got in it sounds beautiful when we hear it but they have to get fed up with that situation in order to take the action and find the solutions and find other people that could help them. And when they did that, that's how they were ultimately able to get into PT school. It's not some secret, but, but that's what we want to get to y'all tonight. I want to hear what Casey has to say about this, man. But I want y'all in this year of 2021, I want y'all to start getting sick and tired of the things that are potentially holding you back and, and start looking for solutions. We have plenty of them ourselves, but it doesn't have to be us. I just want you to start looking for them because that's how you'll start finding the resources and the guidance and the direction you need to ultimately make your dream of becoming a PT real. And, and like without having to guess your way through and having to doubt your way through and having to potentially pull the plug because you quit. Casey, what are your thoughts on it, man? Yeah, there's so many thoughts that came to my head when you were talking, but yeah. there's not really much I can say to that. That was the point. We can end this here. Go to levelupthepreppt.com. We'll talk more about this at, uh, on January 17th, and we'll see you there. I mean, we could end it right there, but I think uh, the biggest thought that came to my head is um, that being fed up uh, with whatever the situation is on your pre-PT journey is really the realization that uh, challenge or adversity is not negative. And, and what I mean by that is um, when it comes to fire, water, earth, all the elements, right? Uh, even some famous person's story, kind of like what Joseph was talking about. Uh, LeBron James, his story of not having a father, right? All those challenges, they were challenges. They, it was adversity, but it made it what it was. It made LeBron James who he was. It made whoever your idol or hero is or shiro is who they were. Uh, same thing with the elements. Fire, it can, you know, cook food for you or it can burn things down. It's not negative it's just a challenge it's just adversity to make you who you are so finally being fed up is like oh man this is a challenge this is hard but i'm not gonna let it define me i'm gonna let it make me better i'm not gonna let the fire burn me down i'm gonna let it nourish me and cook me food and, and all that stuff right um and that's i think the biggest thing that i think people hopefully realize from those nine things that Joseph was talking about, because especially at the end when you were saying, um, like the, your story makes you who you are, all that adversity, all that challenge makes you who, who you are. It's really the best part of your story. Um, like the LeBron James story or whoever it is, uh, people always wanna talk about that. Would he be who he was 
without that challenge of not having his father around. I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Maybe he wouldn't have the drive. Who knows? With you and whatever challenge you're going through with your pre-PT journey, would you be the physical therapist, the, um, the mother, the father, the brother, uh, the student, the applicant, if you didn't have that challenge? Oftentimes, especially when it comes to essay season, oh, I don't have a story, I don't have this or that. Well, let's go back to what Joseph was talking about, that challenge, that adversity. That is the storyline, that is the plot. So why are you running from it when you're in it? I mean, it's natural. You get that fight or flight syndrome, like, oh my gosh, I don't wanna do this, this is hard, this is challenging, of course. But once you realize that it's not negative, it's just there to make you better. If you wanna get deep into all the spirituality, universe stuff, you can go down that rabbit hole as well, but it's there to make you who you are. It is the best part um, of your story. So if you're like, man, I never had an injury. I never had this. I'm not like them in all those pre-PT Inspire series. Well, you might be, and you probably are. It's just, you don't realize that you are in that challenge and adversity in your story right now. And all you're thinking of is, oh my, oh man, they got through that, she got through that. But you are in it now. And you can get through it too. So I think that was the biggest realization that um, what you're going through, all these challenges, all this um, being fed up stuff is just supposed to happen, kind of, right? right? It's there um, for a reason in this part of your life. And there's going to be other challenges like this at different parts of your life. So like, don't run from it. Like, get through it. Fight back. Don't let it punk you. Like, you're better than this. Uh, we put up, we talk about this all the time. We put up posts saying, like, are you really going to let your GPA steal your dreams? Are you really going to let this take away what you've been fighting for? Like, yeah. like no, just fight back. You got it. And um, that was the biggest thought that came to mind. Oh, boom. Well, that's it, y'all. Like, don't, 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 don't run away from them. I, I, like, it, it, it's what makes our story beautiful. And I think we talk about this later in the year when we talk about um, essays and stuff like that. And we, um, Casey always references movies and talks about how when we're watching a really good movie, it's the adversity in it that we love the most, right? Like it, if you can think of your favorite movie, if it didn't have the, the part of it that like frustrated you or the part of it that like left you stressed or whatever, it'd be terrible. It'd be a, it'd be a boring movie. And if that's how life is, but when we're in the middle of it, we tend to turn the movie off. <laughs> we, we turn the movie off and we're like, oh, oh. Oh, it just got bad. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's a bad time. Maybe the movie ends terribly. Maybe my story ends terribly. Maybe I don't get into PT school. And, and that's just not the case. Um, you have to be the one that, that decides that. Um, no one's taking it away from you. We're trying to help you realize that it's right there. But you have to be the one to say, yo, like, I'm, I'm ready. I'm fed up with my circumstance. And I'm ready to start taking control of my entire journey. Taking control and owning my story my frustrations, my fears, and, and figuring out how to use them to my advantage so that I can keep walking one step at a time closer to the day I finally get my acceptance letter. And if that's what you want, I want you to go to leveluptheprept.com. Go save your seat. Uh, we have quite a few students that have already registered for that masterclass. It's a one and a half hour live training where we're basically going to show you the blueprint that we've used for our students, the acceptance system students, the ones that you've been hearing stories about that have gotten in. And if you missed those stories, go watch some of the videos that we've posted already uh, with, with different interviews we've had to inspire yourself. But go go to levelupthepreptea.com. Let us show you how. Because once you're fed up, it's it's one thing to feel fed up and be like, all right, I'm ready to do something. Now we want to show you how. And once, once, you, once you hear how, then I, after that, it's up to you to take massive action. And if you do those things, uh, get fed up, learn how, take massive action, beautiful things will happen. So uh, we look forward to seeing you all there. You guys have an amazing rest of your evening. We'll see you guys soon. Bye.